Champions League, Arsenal, what could possibly go wrong? And welcome back to another episode of Outcast 2 Icons. If you're still enjoying this series, drop a like. That'll be spectacular. Today, I thought we'd start on the page of a, a blast from the past. It's Fernando de Anna. Uh, those of you, obviously, that watched the early parts of the series will certainly uh, have fond memories of him, but also some sour ones at the same time. So I didn't realise that he'd moved. And, um, yeah, my man has developed quite nicely, which, in one sense, I'm happy with, because it means that, obviously, we made the right choice when signing him in the first place. But it also makes me feel just that little bit more bitter about the fact that Dinamo sold him so cheaply after, like, a season and a half at the club. We bought him for five. They sold him out underneath us from 7.75. Literally a year and a half later, moves to Leeds for £24 million. It's annoying because clearly this guy was very talented. And I'll tell you what, if the opportunity came up to bring Fernando to Sassuolo, I wouldn't be entirely opposed to it because he's actually turned into quite some player. So that's kind of exciting. It's just nice to see a player from the past in this save develop so unbelievably well. And he's certainly up there for me. So yeah, he's wanted by Red Bull Salzburg as well. So it's not like he's being wanted by the biggest sides in Europe. I do wonder if, should the situation present itself, maybe we could sneak in for someone like Fernando de Anna and bring him back, reunite him. So, we've actually had a, a set of four games off camera before the Arsenal game, which I'm going to show you now, because otherwise we're doing seven, and it's just too much, too many spoilers. Let's get into them. First up, we were away to Juventus in the cup. Candino's ball in it, lovely header from Lancer. Goalkeeper sort of bundles it into the back of his net, and we took the lead away at Juventus. I felt pretty good about that. It didn't, however, take particularly long for them to get back uh, level, unfortunately. A lovely little ball through here, and James just slots it in the bottom corner for 1-1. That being said, though, we still took them to extra time in this game, but in the 112th minute, uh, they finally found a breakthrough for us. It's annoying that they've got Brian today. Lovely ball around the side for Al Pacelli. And it was a bit of a tight angle, but it was 2-1 to Juventus. And unfortunately, moments after that, literally like less than a minute, uh, Mia with the ball in. And this time on the end of it was Brian O'Day for 3-1 Juve. Uh, we kind of matched them toe for toe all the way into extra time. And I think just a little bit of tiredness couldn't quite rotate as much as I would like in this game. Carlo Rossi started in the centre of midfield alongside uh, Cesari in this game. And I think that was just a slight problem. The injuries to Milivojev and Granados have really, I think for me, been the biggest hampering factor over the last few periods of matches where we just haven't looked quite up to speed. Even though we still picked up some wins, we have looked anywhere near our best and i really think the biggest issue was actually milivoyev i think having that combative strength and genuinely good passing ability in our central midfield made a massive difference to us and his being forced to play deeper as a result of the injuries to Uriarte and whatnot. Sorry, not the injury to uh, Milivoy, but the injury to Uriarte has definitely hampered us slightly. So that's, it's good and bad. But we were at least able to find a slight palate cleanser against Frosinone. 19th place, but it didn't stop us going behind. Palombo with a lovely ball through. Canilia on the end of it. Ah, Milosevic should have probably done better with that one. And on 18 minutes, Frosinone took the lead. But on 20 minutes, Granados with the ball in. Lancer flicks it down. There was Siggy Jonsson on the end of it, which is really, really nice to see to make it one all. And then Granados with the ball in this time. Lancer on the end of it again. And it was 2-1 within 10 minutes. Lancers, I think that's 17th goal. And then the 75th minute, blessing with a beautiful strike off the bench for 3-1. Nice to see him grabbing another goal off the bench. And I genuinely, I think he might actually be about to have a rejuvenation of his career. And you'll see why as we go to some next games. But I think we deserve the win in the end. But, you know, their relegation threat inside. It'd be ridiculous if we didn't, to be honest. Unfortunately, though, we couldn't quite carry that form into the next game at home against 10th place Calliery, or was it 11th place Calliery? Pretty boring game, really. A couple of little chances for us. They had one big chance, which was well saved by Milosevic, but we should have done a bit better in a game like this. Uh, other points being dropped elsewhere have kind of kept us involved, but these are the sort of games that I feel like we'd have won before. Glavash has really struggled playing that Mesrol, unfortunately. But then, our first full-strength game for a very long time against Fiorentina. Pavlish actually slide tackles the ball through. 55 minutes, Fleece takes the lead. Fiorentina then changed their system immediately after that, and, well, I mean, this happened. Six minute on the clock here. Pavlish gets the ball. Granados pops it across for Nel uh, Nissen, who's then saved. Blessing pops it around the side. Granados with the equaliser on the hour mark. And I thought, right, now we can try and kick on from this because we looked a lot, lot better. Then two minutes after that, literally two minutes after they changed their system, we'd gone from 1-0 down to 2-1 up. Milivoy with the ball across. Blessing with a lovely header off the bench to make it 2-1 to the guys. And we really, really needed that. But we still had one more little piece of magic in there. Milivoy picks an absolutely superb ball over the top for Siggy Jonsson. Uh, his shot is originally blocked into the path of Nissen. 3-1 to Swolo. 
but it was just so much better from an attacking output. And I, I don't know, it's weird. Blessing as well. Two goals uh, and an assist in this little period of matches. Uh, he has started to really contribute some stuff that makes me think that he is going to be finding some first-team football with us now, particularly as Candido is going to be uh, sorry injured for the Arsenal game anyway, so Blessing is going to be in the team no matter what happens. But Fiorentino was sixth in the league, so this, for me, was a much, much better result than we've seen as of late. Quick little league update. As you can see, three points separate the top three. Would you would you believe it? Uh, Juventus have dropped a few more points in this period. Lazio really are starting to show the team that their goal difference would suggest that they can be, really. Uh, we're still nine points above Napoli, who are just starting to establish themselves as that fourth place team. Uh, 13 points now above Inter, who are putting a little bit of a gap. But when you look at that, there's a further nine points back to sixth place Fiorentina. I do just wonder if we're not going to be quite good enough, but it really just depends on how far we go in the Champions League, because that will definitely be a factor. Lazio scored a 94th minute winner. I think it was, where was it? Yeah, away at Benevento. Uh, Borussia scored in the 94th minute. So it actually would have been 59, 59, 58 were it not for that. But at the very least, Juventus lost to Milan. So that's something. In other news, uh, Moscatelli has left. I sold him to Brighton for three million pounds because I felt like he wasn't pulling his weight as far as wages. We had Milosevic in goal. Uh, we got Vicario if we need him, but I will look to find another backup goalkeeper in the summer as well. Chance to cash in now, really, before he lost any more value. 50k off the wage bill, three million in the bank stonks just the standard stuff although we did actually technically lose money on the deal so uh sub stonks champions league oh now obviously arsenal have won two of the last three premier league titles they're no mugs we have barcelona who are the champions league winners twice in a row in our group we've not had the best draws but we've made our way through it anyway and against arsenal honestly we're the home team here we've kind of got to go out and leave a mark on this so we're going to go full strength now unfortunately we are going to be and when i say full strength i mean our normal tactic we are i think going to be missing a couple of players i believe milivoyev is going to be out potentially this is not ideal but we just had to so let's see yeah pavlish is suspended and can do what Oh, yeah, Candido's injured. I already knew that. Right, that's fine. We can make these changes now. Don't think it should be too bad. So Blessing will come in. Totally happy to do that. I am prepared to start Quan in here instead of Cuarto because Cuarto, for all his loveliness, is not a defensive midfielder, and Quan is. And I brought him in this team for a reason. I have to have faith in the lad, and I hope that we can develop him. It's a tough ask being thrown into the Champions League, but I really don't think we've got much choice in the matter. As for the other spots, this is the issue. With Milivojev uh, being unavailable for this... Oh, no, he is available. Now, what am I talking about then? In that case, he will come in there instead of Glavash. This is the team I want, really, except with Pavlish in there too. Having Uriarte back frees up Milivojev to play in the centre of midfield, and it makes such a huge difference. The other uh, thing that's happened is Jodrinho has gone out on loan because... Basically, he kicked up a fuss and gave me an ultimatum. Either I loan him out for the rest of the season or he's going to force a move. And I really don't want to lose him permanently. So we're just going to have to take the risk on that right now. But it does make me think another centre-back could be functional for us in the summer. So I think that's going to be our lineup. Although I probably do want Quarto on the bench at the very least. Good goalkeeper. It's basically as strong as I would... Oh, wait, hang on. No, Siggy through the middle. What are you doing, Matt? He's nearly stuck through there. But, I mean, look at the goals. 18 for Lanser now and 16 for Nissan is very, very good. And 7 for Granados. I think he'll get double figures too. Champions League. Arsenal. What could possibly go wrong? Blessing has impressed me in the last few games, so I probably would have potentially wanted to start him anyway, but it's exciting to see. I mean, it's like mid to late February. Okay, fair one. I guess we have, well, maybe we can upset Arsenal here with the slow. With the slow, with the snow. I realise the colours are a little bit all over the place. Uh, it's kind of the best sort of compromise I can do, unfortunately. Uh, Bruno now. This is going to be an interesting one for us. If we can kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Arsenal, I'll be extremely impressed. I'll be very interested to see how Kwon Sang Tae does on his Champions League debut for us. He's sort of been thrust up into the line line, but he does have now 11 caps for South Korea. Okay, this is where we could benefit. Granados to find the head of someone like Lancer, and it's... Oh, it's the youngster! Kwon Sang Tae! Three minutes... <laughs> Why was he up there? That Pavlish doesn't go in the box from these. I don't know why Kwon Sang Tae was even in the area here. Granados with the ball in. Tay, who is five foot eight, scores his first ever goal, I think. Forza Swolo, and it's in the Champions League. What? Hang on, I have to look at the set pieces. Oh, stay back if needed. So normally he wouldn't be. That's interesting, actually. Didn't realise it was set to stay back if needed. I thought it was stay back. But nevertheless, uh, Milosevic will collect that. And it is to swallow one, Arsenal nil. Kwon Sang Tae, the 18-year-old South Korean. First ever goal from defensive midfield as well, I might add. It's not like he's a striker or anything. That's actually very impressive. Pavlish rarely scores for us at all. So the fact that he's already got... Oh, that's a great ball in behind for Kabongo. And it's a really good goal for Skrive Kabongo. 1-1. One, one. Yeah, Arsenal do look very good, unfortunately. And I think we were in for a bit of a struggle bus in general. I think we were just a little bit too late to some of the challenges. And the moment that Stengel is able to cut back inside here and pick out that little pass, uh, Uriarte just gets caught up the pitch. And it's a very good finish. There's nothing Milosevic can do about that, annoyingly. But all is not lost. This team has got goals in it. That much we do know. Oh, dear. Not like that, though. Yeah, passing like that is not going to help us. <laughs> that is just... 
Oh, for God's sake. Are we going to concede off of it as well? Yes, we are. Directly from it, in fact. Skruveko Bongo makes it 2-1 in two minutes. It's like the reversal of the Fiorentina game. I just don't know what Granados is doing with that pass. It's such an aimless ball to nobody. And immediately from that, Arsenal have broken through the back of us again. We've been all over. I don't know what Uriarte is doing. He's so much further up. The goalkeeper's... I mean, <laughs> Milosevic is it's more of a token effort, in really, in actual fact. Well, I mean, we could hardly complain. Uh, we have done nothing really since the goal, unfortunately. We've just not been able to really crack anything through them. Blessing has sadly underperformed today. I always knew it was going to be tough bringing him into a game like this. It's not exactly the same caliber of opponent, but Kabongo's just tore us apart in two quick moments with some bad passing from us. But at least it didn't get any worse after that. They seem to stop attacking as much. I'm going to drop the defensive line in the second half. I don't normally like to do that with our style, with this style right now, but it does seem that Arsenal are able to... They've just got players that are good enough to break that offside trap, although we still look quite high, actually, but maybe it just takes a little while to adjust. Good tackle from Milivojev. I think the key thing is now to just stay in the tie. Second half has been very quiet indeed. We've certainly shut Arsenal down, but they've we've definitely lost what, what, what tiny attacking edge we did have. Although Sigurdsson down the right, Nissen's header over the bar. That's the first real opening we've had in the second half for either team, really. This exact same style of defence. And hello, they're just going to allow Siggy all the way through. He's not going to be able to shoot, is he? Oh, he, what a save from Salazar. Oh, where's the run? The a lovely ball. Oh my God, if we score here, Josip Glavash. Kwang oh, Sang-tae will pick this up. He's just got to fire it over the... That's a really good clearance for Kwang Sang-tae. Lancer has to slide. Oh, what an awful pass. He's going to shoot, but it's not going to be... Yeah, no, it's an absolutely woeful pass. 10 seconds round the side for Siggy Johnson. Can he put the ball in the bun? No, he can't. And that's surely going to do it. It's going to be Sassuolo 1, Arsenal 2. That little bish bash in two seconds has absolutely killed us there. I mean... You could see that once we made those switches in the second half, Arsenal just flatlined and we started to really crawl back into the game towards the end, but it just wasn't enough, unfortunately. It definitely gives us me ideas for the second leg, potentially something we could do, but it's going to be tough pulling that one back from from away. Uh, and that is the issue for us there. But uh, Kwon Sang-te, pretty good debut from the lad in fairness, although, you know, probably just because he scored. Yeah, not great performance all round, but it was always going to be tough. Anyway, there's a few more games off camera. Back for the second leg. I don't think we're out of this yet, given what we've now learned. Right then, guys, we're back, and we had a game away at Empoli. Uh, this was an absolute destruction job, to be honest. Ball whipped in, Cuarto's lofted header after 12 minutes gave us the lead, but it was just onslaught, particularly in the first half. 30 minutes on the clock this time. Ball comes out of the right-hand side here with Lancer. Michel Chair delivers a gorgeous ball, which, blessing, absolutely rifles home. Another goal for him, which is nice to see, to make it 2-0. We then won a penalty, which Granados dispatched for 3-0 before halftime. We were just running through Empoli like nobody's business. And then this... This is a very strange goal. Gonzalez drops the ball here to Blessing, knocks it back to him, whips the cross in, and the goalkeeper just pats it into his own net for 4-0. And then, unfortunately, in the 90th minute of the game, Empoli, ball over the top. This was their first shot of the match. Clementi in, and it was 4-1 in the end. I mean, I think we probably could have won this game by even more. We had a <laughs> look at the XG in this game. 4.7 uh, in the end. We probably should have run through them and got 6 or 7. And that, that's one of our issues. Then to concede off our only shot against. Uh, yeah, this season, when you actually look at our stats in a lot of areas, we are still underperforming. Into, we're still winning a lot of games with big goals, but we are still overall underperforming on that. And we're conceding more goals than we should be. Uh, quite simply. And that's definitely something we need to work out. I have no idea how Gonçalves was actually credited with that goal when it clearly wasn't going in, but they just gave it to him instead of an own goal, which was very strange. Next up, we were really poor at home against Brescia. They played a very strange system that... I thought on paper would be very easy for us to get through, but it just wasn't. Uh, for whatever reason, we just couldn't seem to get any momentum going, and eventually a nil-nil draw. Not good, particularly after the last game. And lastly, we headed off against Lazio. Unfortunately, it was not the best. Delius ball through. Brucio, who is a lethal striker, goes around our goalkeeper after two minutes, not two, four minutes, to make it 1-0 to Lazio. And then before the 10-minute mark had even uh, elapsed, we were pushing up here, and then they just broke the offside trap again. Martins with a gorgeous ball through. For, not even the offside trap, actually. It was Favilli made it 2-0 to Lazio inside 10 minutes. But then we sort of started to fight back into this game a little bit. On the half an hour mark, eventually the ball comes to Lancer here. Bit of a melee, but eventually he gets the shot away and the goalkeeper just bundles it into his own net and it was 2-1 to Lazio. But that was all there really was. There were some chances in the second half. They could have had more in this game, if I'm honest. Uh, we were not very good. And that now does leave us uh, five points off the top of now Lazio. Juventus dropped points against... Who was it? I think it was against Napoli at home. But in addition to that, in the previous match day, Lazio were two goals to the good uh, against someone. I can't remember who it was. Threw it all away to lose 3-2 with two stoppage time goals in that match. So... Arsenal. We've got to turn our attention to something slightly different today, and that is Arsenal away. And we learned a lot from that second half in the first game, which means I'm going to do a next match only and implement the strategies that we employed in that game, which definitely made a massive difference to that match. So I don't know who's actually going to be available today, because I'm fairly certain we've got a suspension. I think it's, yeah, it is Uriate, which is about as unideal as possible. So that means obviously Milivojev will slot back in. He will go on the right-hand side, though. Um... 
Pavlish is there. Cuarto. Hmm. Who do we put in there? I mean, really, it kind of has to be Cuarto. Granados has a slight injury as well, which is unfortunate. So I think that might end up having to be our lineup for today. Although I probably am going to be tempted to put Rivas on the bench for today. Uh, Candido also picked up an injury too, which is not helpful either. Uh, surely Michal Chair. Yeah, we'll start Michal Chair over Kargman. The other change I made towards the end of that Arsenal game was actually the shorter passing. Not something I really mess around with too much. I've tried it in a few games, particularly in the game against Brescia, and we just saw no real benefit to it. But obviously that's, you know, small sample size. But it did seem to work in the second half against Arsenal. So that's what I'm definitely going to try and go with for today, I think. It made a difference in the second half last time. Maybe we can pull off a miracle, but we can't afford to go here and be conservative. We have to push for this. Although what I would say is Arsenal have now changed their system. So I don't know how well they're going to, I don't know how well this is is going to work against their new style. I think we are going to miss Uriate in a game like this, though. Arsenal's form also is excellent, so this is just going to be, let's see what we can do. We are going to have to really, well, we have to, we have to score twice, uh, because a single goal win would not be enough for us. We're going to have to come here to the Emirates and try to find ourselves two goals against a team that have won the Premier League twice in the last three seasons. It's not going to be easy, but if we could find an early goal, that would be an absolute game changer for us. Well, actually, 20 minutes gone, it's been fairly even so far. Uh, Arsenal have definitely had probably the better of the chances, but never mind. Oh, it's the ch yeah, it's Europe, of course, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear, and that surely kills us now. It's 3-1 to Arsenal. Uh, we've actually defended so far reasonably okay in this game. Just getting bodies in the way, doing our thing, not allowing those runs in behind, but edge of the box here for Rodrigo Antonio just gets inside and slots it in the bottom corner. And, uh, well, that's just the Champions League special, isn't it? So, actually, them scoring doesn't really make much difference to us at this point. We just need those two goals. The only difference is, of course, if we'd scored two without reply, we'd have, of course, qualified. Salazar goes long, and we should win that. We do. Jan Bruno brings it down nicely. And, yeah, there we go. That's better. Glavash. Oh, nice little run from Joseph Glavash. Is there a pass? There is. It's Magnus Nissen. Blocked. Oh, he just couldn't quite fashion the opening. Arnold's ball in. And, oh, it's at the bar again. Oh, my God. Oh, surely not. Whew. I mean, they're just better than us. It's just that is the fact if we could find a goal within the next like 10 15 minutes and make a game of this here Mihal Avoya. there we go quarter a bit more of an opening slips it through for Magnus Nissen yes on the end of it it's Arsenal 1 Sassuolo 1 that is brilliant what a pick out from Marco Quarto Magnus Nissen hasn't done a lot lately but I've, you know he's still young and he's gonna learn and get better and better but this is brilliant Milavoya finds that pass in the midfield Quarto spots the run of Nissen great first touch goalkeepers out of position and Magnus Nissen gets us back into this tie at the Emirates right we have to go for this now had to make a couple of changes. Blessings, unfortunately, had another... Oh, another absolute shocker, uh, which is a shame, but which is really the only option we've brought. We've got Rivas on the bench, though, and he's now come in. Nissen's not going to be able to do much with this, I don't sense. The what a pass. What a pick out from Magnus Nissen. Okay, he's on it today. Siggy Johnson off the... B oh, you've got to be joking. I brought him on less than two minutes ago. He seems to have shaken off the knock there. It's, it's a frustrating one, though, because it's like he was literally through on goal. Oh, well, not through on goal, but he was in with a good opportunity to perhaps create something for us. Oh, he's nutmegged him. How did that not cross the line, by the way? Can we just talk about that for a second? Kargman does really well there. If we could just get the ball to one of our forward players right about now, that would be excellent. And actually, we have now done with Rag Magnus, Magnus Nissen. Glavash now. He's got to find the right pass. He does. And Nissen's through again. Oh, no. Bruna around the side. And I tell you what, N Nissen and Sigge Janssen has missed the target as well. Well, we can't say we haven't tried. We have thrown everything at Arsenal towards the end of this and actually found a few openings. Just uh, fluff them. Uh, to be honest, both strikers have missed a, a key chance in this game. If we could just fashion one more shooting opportunity. Glavash, pop it inside. Nissen! Yes! Come on! Arsenal 1, Sassuolo 2, and we've done it in the 94th minute. Magnus Nissen finds the equaliser on aggregate. I can Uh, sorry? The game's like, nope, you don't even get to see a replay of it. It's Arsenal 1, Sassuolo 2, a brace from Magnus Nissen. I mean, to be fair... They should have been out of sight here. I can't believe we're going to extra time. I don't know why the game didn't show us the highlight. Maybe it's because it was like the very last kick of the game or whatever. But hey, wow. I changed a lot in order to get us back into this game. The only thing I'm going to change now is to turn the mentality all the way down because I had it on very attacking, which is something I don't really use. And I don't see us gaining much from being on very attacking because the problem is it will end up with loads of like errant shots. In fact, I've just noticed Arsenal have switched to the system they played in the first game now. That's uh, so why I've adjusted some of our play to try and match it as it's tipped over the bar from Josip Glavash. Remember, a third goal for us probably knocks them out. Milivojev. Milosevic hopping one up long, and Nissan does knock that down, but that should be straightforward for Milosevic. What on earth? Oh. But at the moment, it looks like we are taking Arsenal to penalties, and we are. 
<laughs> oh my god. Right. Well, look at Glavash's pen. I mean, we're obviously going to pick on uh, these guys. I can't believe we're doing this two years in a row. <laughs> I actually can't believe we're doing this two years in a row. But here we go. Right. Penalties. Arsenal Sassuolo from the spot. Herman steps up and it's saved by Petr Milosevic. He was the hero against Real Madrid last time. Can he do it again? They've missed their first pen already. Josip Glavash, a man who's got a bit of a history with missing penalties, and he doesn't do it today. And we take the lead at the Emirates. Rodrigo Antonio, and it's a slash one into the bottom corner. Magnus Nissen now, scorer of both goals for us in this game. Can he fire us through? And he does. Brilliant penalty. We keep the lead. Come on, Caballo. Can Milosevic do some more magic? Yes, he can! It's, oh my goodness me. This guy is a club legend already. Augusto Rivas, the young Argentinian left-sided player on that left foot. Can he slot us in? Oh my God, it's 3-1. 3-1 on penalties. Arsenal will need to basically score every penalty from now on, surely. This is a big, big moment. We are this close to taking Arsenal out of the Champions League with a 94th minute equaliser in the game. <laughs> Belic now for Arsenal. What's Milosevic got in the tank? He hasn't got enough to save that one, but we know now that if we score this next penalty, we are through. And who will take it for us is the question. I think it might be Believ. It is. Roman Believ with a chance. We've got two opportunities, three really, to try and get this now. We have to. Come on, Roman. Be the hero. Wow, he got very close to it. Can he send us through? Roman Believ slots it in the bottom corner. It's a swallow into the quarterfinals for the second consecutive season from the penalty spot. That is absolute muggery. Agreed. Completely agreed. Petar Milosevic, man of the match with a 9.1 rating. He made 12 saves, including two penalty saves. Absolute boss man. I can't believe that. Yes! Magic. That's that's magic. That's what that's FM. That's the thing I love about FM. The ability for that to happen insane my original plan was come back for juventus and go from there but now we've got something else to deal with we will be coming back just before the juve game because that's when the draw is uh, it's not for like another nine days now wow champions league quarterfinals for the second season in a row uh through some absolute mirror hey we'll take these two poor results if it means we get that that's just worth so much more to us right now incredible magnus nissen club legend petar milosevic club legend almost certainly back to back quarterfinals I, I think we'll struggle to go much further but it doesn't matter we got there so next episode is going to be the champions league quarterfinal i did not prepare for this uh, if you've enjoyed this episode and i hope you have drop a like that would be awesome if you're new to the channel subscribe uh, uh, that would be awesome too i stream on twitch tuesdays thursdays not this weekend though as i'm taking the weekend off and i will see you guys tomorrow or rather on sunday for the champions league quarterfinals this gets madder and madder Hold your gun, Capybara. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.